Hi, so I don't know if I'm gonna use this clip like as my introduction. It does not seem like the uh, the billionaire is the bad guy in this book, which honestly might be the least believable thing about this crazy spy sci-fi adventure thriller. <laughs> like who needs to see a divorced Scientologist walking around on a freaking plane when you could read this book? <laughs> Hi, my name is Adriana, and my hair is different in this intro clip than in the rest of the video. So let's just accept it and move on. <laughs> this is the reading vlog slash review of the 17th installment of the Sigma Force series, Tides of Fire by James Rollins. I was so, so excited to receive another arc of the Sigma Force from the publisher William Morrow. Thank you so much to them. Tides of Fire comes out August 15th, which should be the day after this video comes out. So if you are watching this day of, definitely go down in the link below and pre-order it. If you are watching this after it comes out, then just go order it. But maybe, you know, watch my other videos on Sigma Force and catch up with me so we can be friends and talk about this incredible series together. I had an incredible time reading this book. I had some really fun things going on while I was reading this book. So I will hand it off to past Adriana, who had much longer hair, to take you through my reading journey. But before we do, please consider liking and commenting on this video and subscribing to my channel if you like bookish things. Unfortunately, I do not think I'm going to be able to go to any sort of book tour that he is doing because I will be out of the country the week this book actually comes out, which I'm excited to go on this trip, but at the same time kind of bummed. I'm not gonna be able to go get my arc or the actual book signed, but whatever. In order to kind of rehype myself for this book since I don't think I'm gonna be able to like go to an actual book signing event, yesterday the book trailer came out and James Rollins was tweeting about it and put it all over his social media and he said he's very excited about it. He's doing something super crazy and cool with this book. So I have not read like anything about this book so far. Obviously I kind of know the premise because I've read 16, 17, I don't even know which one in the series this is. I've read many, many other Sigma Force books. I'm just excited to see what is in the book trailer that is going to be bigger and more bombastic than his previous books, I will stop blathering and we will react to the trailer. <laughs> Here is the trailer, the book trailer for this book that I am just so excited and over the moon for. <laughs> Timely with the uh, Titanic news we got with that submersible. Something is stirring. <laughs> this is great. Oh, hell yeah. Shake the foundations of humanity. So it seems like we have some sort of ancient animal plague something that is like some sort of microorganism looked like something in there. We also have a giant volcano so like we got small and we got big. I am very intrigued to see what is going to be happening with this book. I kind of want to abandon all my reading plans now and just like pick it up because I just love these books so much. But anyway, I will get back to you when I actually start reading the book. <laughs> okay, I am finally ready to start Tides of Fire. I am so excited to jump into this, but also really, really bummed that I'm gonna miss the book tour. Like I was planning on flying down to Scottsdale to be there for like his opening of the book tour, but I am 99% going to China for work during that week if I get my visa. So that's definitely kind of a bummer, but we will power through. I am still very excited for this book. I have no idea what's going on. I watched that book trailer, but obviously like book trailers don't really tell you much, but they're fun to watch. Let's see. Oh no. <laughs> Focusing on the Titan project, which 
I guess I'll probably have dates in here, but like the Titan Submersible is still a very timely thing in the time in which I am filming this. So that's kind of an interesting little little thing in there. Art imitating life, life imitating art. Okay, okay. So we are at a research station off the coast of Australia. They are researching this area that is a dead sea kind of area, but there is one zone that is thriving with life. And I imagine that is where a lot of our global threat is gonna come from. I'm also seeing some buzzwords in here like Aboriginal mythology, which that could be our historical mystery element, which both of those sound super fun. I really just want to dig into this immediately. Oh my god, maps. Oh, I love a map. We got some schematics. We got more maps. I am so, so down to just tear into this book. I really need to just have something really grab me in a way I know that only James Rollins can. <laughs> I just got back from the gym, which is why I'm drinking Michelob Ultra, because it's a sports beer. <laughs> but while I was there, I finished the first part of Tides of Fire. I am now on the second part. <laughs> and sometimes I can really struggle with the pacing and like the beginning parts of these Sigma Force novels, but I really feel like this is a lot less like info dumpy than a lot of like the previous Sigma Forces, but I still feel like I have all of like the information I do need. So I'm just, I'm really, really enjoying it so far. And I'm not quite sure where the, I guess, history portion is coming in yet. The Aboriginal mythology, because right now it's been very focused on like the science part and then like the action part, but we haven't gotten a lot of like history, anthropology, whatever is gonna be introduced into here, the soft science part. But I am very, very excited to get there. But like I said, I'm just, I'm having a really good time reading this book. This is exactly what I needed at this point. I was starting to feel a little reading slumpy and this just sucked me right back in. I'm feeling good. I'm ready to go a full steam ahead on the 17th installment of the Sigma Four series. <laughs> Good morning. So I just finished the second part of Tides of Fire and this part really kind of honed in on our mystery... I don't really know how to explain it. We don't know if it's like bacterial, viral, there's some sort of weird disease happening. So we really honed in on that this section. Our Sigma Force team seems to be very adversari adversarial with the Chinese. So maybe it's like fate that I happen to be going to China the week that this comes out. <laughs> Life imitates art sometimes, I suppose. <laughs> we still haven't really dug into the history element yet, but our Sigma team just got their hands on an old artifact, which I think is really going to launch us into that kind of history, more Da Vinci Code kind of stuff. <laughs> and, you know, following Commander Gray through all of his weird hunches and stuff is always very fun when it comes to these historical mysteries. So I am very excited to start the third part. I think there's going to be some interesting things happening. There might be some underwater battles. There might be some contagion releases. I don't know but I'm really looking forward to it. As far as my life on this happy Saturday, my husband and I are gonna be going to the farmer's market and then coming back and watching some F1. So, happy Saturday. I just got back from dirt bike riding a couple hours ago and I managed to finish the next section of 
Tides of Fire. And this section was pretty short. I mean, there wasn't too much in here I want to talk about that is not very spoilery. But I do want to bring up in this section specifically, they do a lot of submersible stuff, like deep sea submersible. And I just want to say, I think James Rollins could have designed a better submersible than Stockton Rush. <laughs> he mentions in here that they got into a titanium sphere which is the industry standard for submersibles. So, you know, just thought it was interesting. You know, I would feel safer getting in a submersible that James Rollins designed than, you know, one from Ocean Gate. Not a piece of carbon fiber to be found on the uh, structure of this submersible. <laughs> I also wanted to mention that it does not seem like the, uh, the billionaire is the bad guy in this book. He actually does seem more concerned with people's safety than the press or being successful. Which honestly might be the least believable thing about this crazy spy sci-fi adventure thriller. <laughs> yeah, overall this was like a pretty, pretty low-key part. So I think this next part is going to be crazy. It is labeled Cataclysm, which... I think some I think some stuff's about to go down. Yeah, it's about this long and just flipping through, I saw some pictures that look very promising for a historical mystery. We still haven't gotten much history yet. I I'm hoping that we're going to get mostly history in this last half because I feel like I've gotten enough science. I'm good on the science now. I want more history. <laughs> but yeah, that's where we're at. Still very much enjoying it. Had a great day dirt biking today with my dad. His birthday's on Wednesday, so we went out and did our favorite thing together. And yeah, now I'm vibing. The Sunday scaries are setting in and just hoping for a good easy week. Good morning. I finished the fourth part our fourth section of the book. It was another pretty short section, so I don't have like too, too much to say. I will say that we had like some pretty good action scenes and it seems like we're really now set up to get into the historical mystery, the strange outbreak disease thing we're dealing with seems to have also happened 200 years ago. So now they are researching what happened 200 years ago to figure out what's going on. I am, I'm very intrigued to see where we go from here. One of the characters we have been following is kind of in a mortal peril now, so we will see what is in store for them, hopefully a bit more. This fifth section, this fix fifth section is another kind of shorty one, so I might be able to finish it today. I am planning on bringing this to the gym with me and reading it on the stair stepper, so we shall see how long I survive doing that. <laughs> that whole pacing thing I was talking about after the first section, the first section is extremely fast-paced, which I think is in contrast to a lot of his like earlier, earlier books. <laughs> where kind of like the whole first half of the book is fairly slow, but I think this one's really cool in that it like grips you in that first section and then it kind of slows down the pacing to get you into these, you know, scientific historical shenanigans. <laughs> this is probably our last section of like slower pacing and I think it's just going to ramp up from here. Just, you know, constant action scene after action scene, but I am definitely still really really enjoying this one. I always say this but the most recent Sigma Force novel is always my favorite Sigma Force novel. <laughs> Every time he seems to up the stakes and just make it way more fun and exciting. Yeah, I think this is gonna be my new favorite one but we shall see. <laughs> okay, here we go. Finished the next section last night and we finally got into the history stuff I had been wanting to see. So feeling pretty good about that. I think the next section, we might switch back to more of the sign. Well, I don't know. I don't know if this next section is gonna be everybody coming back together because we've had some people on the mainland, some people out in the water. Might make sense for this next section to bring everybody back together and then everyone can be together for the very last section. So we shall see how it all turns out, but this section did have the required Joe Kowalski 
impeccable one-liner that makes me laugh out loud, required per book. <laughs> so that's always a good time. Kowalski is definitely one of my favorite characters just because he's such a black sheep in this organization. Everybody else is like some sort of PhD in a hard science and he was brought in as an ex-military guy and then got like a demolitions degree. <laughs> so like even his like area of science that he specializes in is just blowing shit up, which is great. We love it. But anyway, we are having a great time and I am excited to keep plugging away at this book. Like I said, I think I have two more sections. So yeah, one section and then I think, so this is the next section and then I think this might be the last section. Yeah, this many. <laughs> life plans because it's still supposed to be somewhat of a vlog. My dad's birthday is today so we're taking him out to dinner at the Italian restaurant in town so may or may not get a clip of that but that's what I'm doing today so I may or may not get that much reading done. Good morning. I finished the sixth part of Tides of Fire. This was a very bombastic blockbuster <laughs> section. We got underwater fights going on, we got things blowing up, we got airplanes, ocean, air, land, everything is blowing up. <laughs> it is crazy. So very fun, very fun section. <laughs> but I do want to take this time to kind of talk about one of my favorite characters of the Sigma Force series, Seishan, and how I feel like since she has had a kid, the author doesn't really know what to do with her anymore. Like, she used to play such a fun, pivotal part in all of the books, and now I feel like she's just kind of there and doesn't really get a lot of action or characterization or like really anything. Like, honestly, since, what was that, seventh? Yeah, seventh, since seventh plague, 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 whatever. <laughs> Uh, I feel like she hasn't really been that much of a character and it makes me sad. I don't know. I mean, there's still one section left. Maybe we'll focus really heavily in on her, but it just, it seems weird not to have her play more of a pivotal role considering we're in China with her mother in a lot of this book. I don't know. I mean, I'm not the author, but I miss the character of Seishan and I would like to have her be as important to the story as she used to be. <laughs> Whatever, that's my only thing. I wish we had more Seishan, because she's the best and my favorite character. But this seventh part is the last section of the book, so I'm excited to see how everything wraps up and how they actually solve all of these problems that they have, as well as read through the, I guess, what is true and kind of all that backup stuff. Yeah, author's note to the readers, truth or fiction. That's always a fun section to read at the end. Parse apart what was story and what was actual real stuff. So with that, I'm gonna get back to reading. <laughs> Good morning. I just finished taking the dog on a walk, so I've had some time to kind of di digest, think a little bit. I'm ready to give some final thoughts on Tides of Fire by James Rollins. I had mentioned in one of these updates that I felt like Seishan wasn't really getting enough screen time, and especially much like, oh, where we go, much like Kingdom of Bones, the end of this book has kind of a big emotional kicker and it really hinges on Seishan and Grey's relationship and I just it didn't really feel earned to me because we got nothing from Seishan's view. In Kingdom of Bones the emotional kicker really hinged on the relationship between Tucker and Kane and ex-soldier and his canine German Shepherd military dog, and we got more perspective from the dog in this book than we did from Seishan in this book. And it just felt kind of, it felt weird. Like, the emotional scene felt unearned, and it just felt like it was really missing because, like, 
the whole reason the team is in China and gets involved in this whole big mess at the start is because they're visiting Seishan's family. So it just like, that part of it was kind of weird to me and definitely really stuck out to me as a reader. But other than that, this book is a freaking summer blockbuster. Like who needs to see a divorced Scientologist walking around on a freaking plane when you could read this book? It is impeccable the amount of action and crazy stuff going on. I think this book gets the award for most creative death I have ever read or I guess like taken in from media. Crazy. So so cool. <laughs> and the epilogue of this book and the last sentence of the author's note has me real horned up for the next one. I think I always say that like my favorite Sigma Force novel is the most recent one, but I think my currently my favorite Sigma Force novel is the next one. I think this is, book set us up so well for such a cool kind of return to form for the next book. I don't want to give any spoilers, but like I am pumped. I think it's gonna be so so cool. But not to take away from this book. I really did enjoy this book. I'm gonna give it five stars even though I had some negative feelings about it just because like the series is incredible to me and I love it immensely. <laughs> so if you are a Sigma Force reader definitely go ahead and pre-order this one. If you are not a Sigma Force reader start reading. Start getting into it. I have five videos out reading through the first five books so get on it you could catch up with me in not that long so once again thank you to william morrow for sending me this arc to read and review and thank you to all of you beautiful people for watching this video and i will catch you on the next one